Hey guys, um, just to continue from where I left off in the last video, well, somewhat where I left off, I was mentioning how um, it seems that I have drawn people to me over the years who don't value or appreciate my opinion on things, or they don't want to hear my opinion on things because they find it very upsetting. Um, I think that in this culture we hold back a lot of truth from people, we don't want to hurt people's feelings. And that's fine. There's a way to say things, though, to people that should get them to think a little bit, but not attack them. Everyone's entitled to their own beliefs. Um, I've learned that when I express my, it's been my experience that when I express mine, I get attacked uh, for my beliefs <laughs> a lot of times, um, because like I said before, they're not usually the norm. So I was talking to someone for about a year, and, you know, it's hard to describe, like, I tolerate a lot of things from people, and eventually I just start to realize that this particular person was not someone who I really wanted in my life anymore. Um, they were continuing to use drugs of some type, I'm not going to say which. Um, it just got tiring, especially as I started to clean up my own act with things. I just couldn't you know, deal with it. I mean, their personality was so different when they were actually on the drug compared to when they were off of it. Um, they would just babble and ask the same things over and over or suddenly didn't remember something I had talked about quite a bit, you know, with them. And that part was annoying, but like I said, I'm no angel when it comes to things, so I, you know, let it slide for quite a while. And then I said, uh, you know, because the person had said, well, I'm glad that, you know, you're starting to exercise and do things to help yourself because then it makes me want to do it too. And that's good, you know, whatever. And then the person continues to do drugs and continues to act a certain way, which is fine. Again, it's that person's life, um, but it's not something I want in mine or I don't want it to be in my life um, through people that I'm talking to on a regular basis. It's not good for me psychologically. It's not good. It's not just part of what I want in my existence. And so to make a long story short, like I just kind of casually said, well, just you got to start somewhere, you know, and <coughs> sorry, I'm trying to hold back a cough. I hate when I cough on camera. So anyway, the point is, is he said I was self-righteous, like not even online. Like I sign off and he emails me and tells me that I'm self-righteous. And then he gives me a link to Wikipedia to explain what self-righteous means. And as if I don't already know, or I think most people know what self-righteous means. It's not even a really nice thing to say to somebody. Um, so that's when I decided, like, wow, like, I'm not talking to you anymore. And I just cut the person off. And then, like, they didn't really get the hint. Like, they kept emailing me and emailing me. And I didn't want to delete them off Facebook because it's kind of childish just to delete somebody. And then they, like, kept writing and sending stuff. And then, like, they posted something from Facebook that I wrote like in th mid-2010, I think it was, maybe uh, late 2010. So they went all the way back in my Facebook and like copied something that I had wrote about a stalker, or like, like not a stalker, but the word stalker was in it. And then they're like, oh, but I'm not a stalker and everything like that. And I was just like, you know what, I'm going to delete you now. Like, I just can't anymore um, deal with people. I'm perfectly happy with the person I live with and talking to the person I talk to on the phone quite a bit. Uh, that's enough for now. And I would like real life friends, but I'm not going to seek out friendships just for the sake of having friendships. I want people that are interested in the same things that I'm interested in, or at least have somewhat of the same philosophy as me. It doesn't mean my philosophy is correct. It just means why would I want to surround myself with people that I can't actually speak my mind around? Otherwise I'll be attacked or you know, stuff like that. And why would I also want to be friends with someone who um, continues to hurt themselves? It's like a mirror of a part of me that I don't like. So if I don't like that about myself, why would I allow all that stuff into my life? Um, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I know if the person's watching the video, it makes sense to that. They know what I'm talking about. I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense. So I'm just, you know, done with that whole situation and like I said before I'm going to get emails about things in the future and if I feel like emailing back I will but I'm not going to make myself um, there's nothing that I can tell you or say to you that you can't find on your own 
especially with everything that I've shown, you know, over the years on here. Um, let's see, what else could I talk about? I was going to mention something in my mind flipped. So, okay, I'll talk about something else. This book, I may have showed it before, um, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, actually very interesting because you're told usually that once you have heart disease that, you know, you can treat it with medication, but you can't reverse it. And even the medications supposedly don't reverse, you know, clogged arteries and stuff like that. But there's actually um, a 12 year study done by him that shows that you can, and he has actual angiograms uh, to prove um, that there's selective reversing and that they can stop heart disease in its track. Um, but again, someone's going to read it and be like, well, why can't I have a burger once in a while? Well, if you listen to my last video, like I told you, moderation, you know, kills people. <laughs> um, trying to see. I'm not flowing like in the past two videos like I usually do, and it's just because there's so much on my head, and I, I still feel like I'm being cautious about what I'm saying, that I'm not saying, you know, how I really feel about things. Um, I'm waiting for the emails like, oh, you seem depressed and everything. And it's funny because I'm not depressed. I actually feel good um, as far as mentally I feel good. And I have been continuing, like I said before, to exercise and to just continue to eat a certain way and just force myself to do, you know, things, certain things. Oh, I know something I was going to say. A lot of times people will email and say, oh, well, can you work yet? Can you work yet? As if somehow, if you can have a job and hold a job, that that makes you well. That going to work makes you, um, quote unquote, normal. And I've come to the realization that if I was perfectly healthy tomorrow, I wouldn't run out and get a job. I don't have to at this point. I'm not in a situation where I actually have to. If I had to, then I would. But it doesn't mean I'd be happy at that job because most jobs that are available to me with a, <coughs> with a, a lack of a college degree um, are not something that I'd be really interested in. I don't care enough to be in customer service. And that was a large part of my jobs in the past. Uh, you know, the returns desk at TJ Maxx. Uh, I worked at Walmart. Um, I worked at hotels, and the truth of the matter is, and maybe it makes me a miserable person, but I don't care about your problems. I don't care that something rang up 10 cents more. I mean, of course, obviously, I would ring it through and refund the 10 cents if the person's even right. Usually, they're not. And uh, people make this gigantic deal over everything. Like, I'm here on vacation. I want a room that's on the ground floor by the beach, even though when they book their room, they never stayed at that, so the only room available, I'm going from a story that actually happened, um, is on the third floor. And I remember telling this woman that you you have the last available room, like there is none. And she's just like, she put her hand on her hip and she's just like, well, I'm not leaving here until I get a room on the first floor. And I said, good, then bring the bricks and I'll build it for you. And like, it snapped her out of her thing and she just got disgusted with me and laughed and then, uh. This other time, like, this woman had called down to the front desk because she basically beat her daughter and threw her down a staircase. Real classy place that I was working, by the way, um, in Florida. And um, she's just like, she's under 18, and she called an ambulance, and now the ambulance took her. I hold you responsible, and I'm going to have your job. Like, I can control who calls 911, first of all. But second of all... I was just like, well, it pays $7.15 an hour, and if you want it, you can have it. Come on downstairs. And she's just like, I can't believe you just said that to me. I mean, I just, I don't care about a lot of things. I see on Facebook um, a lot of people like, oh, going to the barbecue, going to brunch, going to the movie, going here, going there, going there. It's like, they, they to me, they seem really unconscious as a person. They seem very shallow. Um, pictures of the new cars, new clothes, new this, knew that, oh, I can't wait to get this, or oh, damn, my taxes, and oh, my bill's overdue, and oh, this and that. It's just so boring and stupid that I don't even want to be involved in it. And uh, I wanted to get rid of Facebook, I think, and I just haven't clicked the delete button yet. But something um, recently came to my attention, which was <laughs> that if you get locked out of your Facebook, or if someone says that your account's fake, or 
if uh, Facebook's algorithm says that you don't um, are a real person for some reason or whatever the excuse is that they want you to send a copy of your um, photo ID. That's not going to happen. I'm not sending a copy of my photo ID. So in the past, I used to say, add it on Facebook, don't bother. I'm not going to hardly be on there and not going to another social network. I'm over it. Most people have nothing of interest to say anyway. Um, I'm sure if you're on Facebook and you listen to my videos and you can tolerate me, that you're probably over it too um, in all social networks. I mean, it's just no one cares. You know, really, do I need to know what restaurant you're at? Do I need to know, you know, do I need a picture of the plate you just got of your food and or the glass of wine that you have? I mean, it's just we're wasting our time. We are so wasting our time on the Internet all the time. And, and that's why I'm making videos and I'll do that. And I'll respond to some email, maybe. But I don't know, like. Another experience that I had that kind of got me to pull away from the internet a little bit was um, Keith, maybe about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now, he had really bad chest pain and he never complains. And heart attacks uh, kind of run in his family and let's face it, Keith eats a lot of candy bars, drinks about 12 cups of coffee a day, smokes two packs of cigarettes, um, likes to eat chips, he's not overweight, but he eats a lot of garbage. So. Um, he didn't want to go at first, and I was like, okay. So I stopped over at my father's house to drop something off, came back, and then he said that he wanted to go to the hospital because the pain was going up his uh, to his chin and then over to his shoulder. And so I was like, all right, well, let's go. So I take him to the hospital, and <clears throat> they take him in, and um, I was waiting you know, for a while. So I go out of the, um, the doors, and I go to smoke. Like I said, I smoke. It's a bad habit. I'm stopping. I'm trying to, desperately to stop, and I'm almost there. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. So I go out to smoke, and I realize that there's people at the smoking station at this hospital. And in the past, I remember, um, you know, you used to walk past people, and you would say, even if you didn't know them, like if you made eye contact, you would say hi or just whatever, just being cordial, you know. And everyone was just staring at their phone like this. Like everyone was just doing this and. Even in the hospital, like, there was this guy, like, running around the waiting room, like, snapping photographs, like, of, like, the nurse at the nurse's station, the, the seats. Um, there was a guy walking down um, towards where, like, the vending machines were, and he almost tripped because he had, like, you know, these devices. And I started to realize that everyone's really plugged in to this whole system. Um, people aren't reading books, really, anymore. Um, they're just texting and texting. That's another thing too. It's like I just I have a cheap cell phone. I never like really cared to get one of the more up you know state of the art ones for lack of a better word. I just don't have a lot of money to even get that anyway, and paying so much a month to you know keep that for having unlimited text. And but everyone's like text me, text me, text me, text me. And it's like I I don't text. I just don't. Um, in the past, it's probably something I would have been into, but the more that I see that people are sucked into Facebook and Twitter, and now, oh, Google Plus, that came along, and oh, I got I got an invite to Google Plus, and aren't I special? I got invited. It's like 10 million people got invited to Google Plus, but it's like some exclusive club, and you know, Facebook sells a lot of information, and they, um, it's just data harvesting. It's just getting all your information and it's sucking your life out of you. It's just, I mean, when it, I remember playing Farmville and I'm sure some of you have played Farmville. It's like I would get up because I had to harvest my pineapples. There are no pineapples, but we're all harvesting our plants and we're playing these games and we're texting and we're not even plugged into real life anymore. And then you wonder why people feel depressed and, you know, sick and it's like you there's no way we're not meant for this like we're supposed to walk okay like we're probably at least supposed to walk five miles a day why is my shirt doing this but um i don't know we're supposed to walk at least no one's supposed to really run around all the time that's actually bad for you to run constantly but when you're supposed to be active you're an animal okay and you're supposed to be active and we're just sitting there 
we're watching TV, we're sitting on the computer, we're downloading movies, we're watching those on our phones, and we're texting, and we're sitting on buses texting, and we're like, you know, people are just taking their devices and like hovering them around, snapping photos of everything, and it's just gotten to the point of just ridiculousness. And I've watched over the years, um, I'm in a unique situation where I went online when it wasn't all that popular, when most people still weren't on the internet. And over this time, I've watched people get stupider and stupider. And society has changed to a point where I don't think that anyone now who is probably 25, at least 25 and down, knows a world without it. And I remember um, people walking down the street in the evening when it got cool and talking to their neighbors. I remember <coughs> like people's parents watching out the window. You know, if you were acting a fool, they would call your parents. And now I see children just like animals running around, throwing things, uh, misbehaving, and the parent not even... I mean, it got bad as it was. Let's face it, when I was little, if you acted that way, your parent would have grabbed you and smacked you on the ass and said, cut it out and put you in the car or dragged you out, your ass out of the store and you would have went home. And then it became, oh no, Sally, don't do that. Oh, Bobby, stop it, stop it. We became that world of talk to your children only. And the kids are just ignoring these parents. They always were. And they're just running around, taking velvet ropes on things, unhooking them, dropping them, throwing things at people. And the parents were like, stop it, stop it. And now you don't even hardly have that unless you have someone who's somewhat educated or somewhat still, I don't know. But now all you really have is just a lot of little monsters running around with parents on their cell phones, not paying attention to what's happening. Children are screaming, carrying on tantrums. The adults are no better, standing in line at stores, like leaving lines and then coming back into the line or going in the supermarket, blocking the aisles, blocking people. Um, I know even with Keith, like he works at this store and they're closing and like they're bringing all these, uh, they have like displays out front of the store. He's bringing it all in and the doors are locked except for the door that's open where things are being in. And people run in between him pulling a shelf back in. Oh, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. It's like the store's closed. Get out. Everything. I don't know. I I can't imagine even working in that environment anymore. I I wouldn't be able to hold my job because I would be like, can't you see that the store's closed? And if they even, I don't know. I would lose it. I know I would. Um. So that's it for today. Like I said this is gonna be a lot of babbling, probably of just personal thoughts of mine. But yeah, I'm done. Um, pretty much with Facebook, so you can find me on here. I think this is going to be the only place I am until YouTube goes absolutely insane and demands photo IDs. And everything. <laughs> Unless they're paying me. Um, well, I guess I do kind of get paid from YouTube. Not very much, but a little bit. Because um, there's ads that run on my videos, but it's not like I'm getting a lot. So, Alright, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys, um, just to continue from where I left off in the last video, well, somewhat where I left off, I was mentioning how um, it seems that I have drawn people to me over the years who don't value or appreciate my opinion on things, or they don't want to hear my opinion on things because they find it very upsetting. Um, I think that in this culture, the norm. So I was talking to someone for about a year, and you know, it's hard to describe, like, I tolerate a lot of things from people, and eventually I just start to realize that this particular person was not someone who I really wanted in my life anymore. Um, they were continuing to use drugs, or we hold back a lot of truth from people. We don't want to hurt people's feelings, and that's fine. There's a way to say things, though, to people that should get them to think a little bit, but not attack them. Everyone's entitled to their own beliefs. Um, I've learned that when I express my, it's been my experience that when I express mine, I get attacked uh, for my beliefs <laughs> a lot of times. Because um, like I said before, they're not usually of some type, I'm not going to say which. Um, 
it just got tiring, especially as I started to clean up my own act with things. I just couldn't, you know, deal with it. I mean, their personality was so different when they were actually on the drug compared to when they were off of it. Um, they would just babble and ask the same things over and over or suddenly didn't remember something I had talked about quite a bit, you know, with them. And that part was annoying, but like I said, I'm no angel when it comes to things, so I, you know, let it slide for quite a while. And then I said, uh, you know, because the person had said, well, I'm glad that, you know, you're starting to exercise and do things to help yourself because then it makes me want to do it too.